And my goal today is to talk to you about why evolutionary biology does not support racism. But as stated, this thesis isn't new. Um, maybe students in here have experience in fields like sociology, or if you do work in human genetics, you know that there have been arguments that have advanced and the American Sociological Association, I'm probably the American Anthropological Association, all sort of come out strong in favor of the claim that there's no biological basis for race. And so, of course, that's great, great news. Then there's no biological basis for racism, which is awesome. Based on shared biological features, now this can be a stronger or a weaker concept, right? The obvious shared biological features are things like skin color or hair type. Right? Those are the ones we use to identify people and put them in their racial categories. Um, and then some people think there's something deeper biological about it, that you can look at somebody's skin color and make predictions about them in terms of their behavior or their IQ or stuff like that. And that's where we get into these ideas of scientific racism. OK, racism is an idea that doesn't have to have biology in it at all. It's really important to realize that racism is about us as humans. We are the creators of racism. We are the ones that can stop it. OK, it's the idea that the members of a race share, a social, share social and behavioral characteristics such that some races are superior to others. So when people want to combat scientific racism, one good thing to try to do is to say, OK, there's no biology to race. So what's the argument for that view? I've been alluding to it. I've mentioned it. Here's the argument. And these numbers have changed. It's, I call it Lewinton's genetic argument. But when Lewinton published the argument in 1972, um, the number was, it wasn't yet known that humans are 99.9% .9 genetically similar. His numbers were a little different, but these are the modern numbers. So humans are 99.9% .9 genetically similar, so we share that much DNA. Um, of the remaining 1%, there is more genetic variation within the major racial groups than there is among them, okay? And so, you know, the idea of race is the idea that we have these clusters of traits that sort of define each racial group. And so what this is showing is there aren't those tight clusters, right? There's no such thing. It's actually the variation is going on. When you see clusters, they're within the races, not between them, right? Um, at 85% occurs within the races, only 15% occurs between the races. So if you take all the genetic variation among humans and you break people into races, only 15% of the variation can be accounted for by race, OK? So scientists have concluded there's no biological basis to race. And this is a good argument. There's a lot to say for it. 